take certain things, you have to pass tests. Sure. You have this thing, so you know where you are. They're treating judo like, well, what do I want to do tonight? Mm -hmm. people, people don't even know. Let's say there's something on television. I don't want to go to judo, I'll just watch that. They don't know that there's certain lessons coming up. Yeah. And then when the teacher gives the lesson, he doesn't even think about, how do I know that they've learned it? You know? Now, if you were to teach in a school, any subject, you have to give the school an outline of what you're going to teach each class. Yeah. You have to show or describe how would you know what is it you want the student to get out of that class. How do you know that the student has learned this, has done this? Yeah. See, so you need it's. This is professional teaching. This is not what I feel I'm doing, or I'm going to tell people. See, when you just demonstrate, you're not teaching. You're telling people how smart you are. So, judo lacks that. Now, other countries have developed better teaching methods. And if you want to get judo into a school system, you have to do what I said. Yeah. They won't accept it, especially if it's credit for the school. Now, if it's just an after-school activity, you know, they don't care. So maybe with enough of the old guys leaving judo and new young people coming in, and today we have better communication with YouTube and stuff, uh, judo I think is still very good and is needed. Uh, because of the, 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 the element in judo, which is its positive part, is free practice. And having the ability to apply things you know, doing that. Then, of course, there's the tournament. Now, even Kano, he felt that this, the concept of maximum efficient use of energy was really in the competitive stage, because that's when you have to be more. See, just to go and cooperate with each other, sure, it's an efficient use, but it's not the maximum. You're not, you're not in a situation where, how am I going to make this work? Which direction can I go? Mm -hmm. And do I use my feet or do I with my hands or what have you? And so in some of the writings that he had, he, he, he describes sort of phases of judo. The physical getting in condition, the informative phase, where you're observing different things and learning different mm -hmm. things. And then there's the competitive. And the competitive free practice can be very competitive. It depends on how you want to practice. And so um, he felt at that point, that's where you learn more about how to control yourself because you need to, it's, it, it, it becomes, either you do that or you lose. And so it's at that point where he felt that that was, uh, that was good. Um, I've seen judo with blind children, I even help some. That's interesting, they have to use intuition, they have to use feeling to do that, you yes, know. Yes, the ch children have to, the feeling. Uh, I helped the one blind athlete, he was going to the world championship. And um, not that I train blind people, but one of my training methods is to blindfold my student. Mm. To work without your eyes and to feel. So I, I gave him a few suggestions, just uh, some thoughts. And I met him a few years later at the Braille Institute for the Blind, and he said, that what the things that I told him, that's why he won the silver medal. Hmm. He used it. All of a sudden, he knew where he was at on the mat. I explained some of the things that Ishikawa taught me, which has to do with feeling and elbow and some other things. Focus, understanding the, where the person's center of gravity is and oh, some other things. It was, it was a little technical. So I think judo training. Well, actually all of it, jiu-jitsu, judo, it's body contact. The thing is that people are not you today, especially today, the children don't even get to interface with other children. They yes. sit there by a computer. Yes, isolated, yes. All right? They're not even with other humans. So just the fact that you're touching each other, even if it's cooperative, doesn't make any difference, yes. is a big thing. And then you have a teacher you respect. Now, if they have a system that's more structured, 
then you know where you're going and you'll stay in order. It's not a matter of which is better. No, no, no. It's... In any of the martial yeah. arts. Now, I, I would never say one is better than the other. So much depends on the individual. The individual. Who is mastering his body and art and how he applies it. Yes. Right, right. And uh, so, um, anyways, I don't know where judo's going. Uh, I don't think it will go away. It, it, it is more or less solid here and there. And with the mixed martial arts, judo is getting a reputation mm -hmm. that they never had because now you're mixed and, and who's winning? Sure, sure. Again, it's a game with certain rules. Does it mean in a real fight? Who knows? Nobody this, this knows. Is, this, yeah. this, <laughs> it's, it's not the same thing. The question, next question I have is interesting. The, the rise of popularity of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mm -hmm. and a lot of people are, there is a big misinformation exists because what they see on television, that's what they take it for reality. Yeah. So they, and biggest misinformation thinking that the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and all the techniques are amazing, but they're forgetting that it all came from Judah. No, it is Judah. It is Judah, but they don't, the, the younger generation, that's yeah. the biggest, yeah. Yeah. they think and when I get phone calls and I, they ask what I teach and I explain that I teach traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, they, they were surprised. They said, why is it different from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Yes and no, because Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a small part of a bigger picture of Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Because what's really Brazilian? It's a nevaza. It's a ground war. It's a ground war yeah. In Judo, is there is throws, there is joint like there is exists, and there is nevaza. But they, only specialize in Nevada. Well, the other thing, well, the reason Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, is attractive to a lot of people, mm -hmm. or they'll keep people for a while, is because Nevada can be learned in a much shorter time than throwing. Throwing techniques require a lot more time. Concentration, balance, diving. To be able to be good in, say, one particular throw, Otherwise, you're not doing over just one. Let's say take at least a year. Right. Mat work, six months, three months. I don't know if you're doing something. Because you don't need quite the timing. So, um, Oda Sensei, who was Mr. Newaza in Japan, he used to say, uh, Newaza, you're like a hibby. <laughs> Hibby's Japanese for snake. Mm -hmm. In fact, he had taught me that, that walking hand thing, so, and then you're there. So, um, Neiwaza was, and, and, and Oda was one of the most important people in pushing Neiwaza. He told Kano that uh, Neiwaza and Tachiwaza, you know, throwing, 50-50 mm -hmm. importance. And at that time, Kano says, no, 10% for Neiwaza. Today in the Kodokan, it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. You watch the children practicing. They do drills, they'll do uh, turnovers. Just you turn the person over and they turn you over and you go back and forth. And they're doing a lot of, you'll see a lot of Nawaza. Where before that, one of the things that ruined the knowledge of Nawaza was this thing called Katami no Kata, the Kata for mat work. It is really not very good. One person lays there, the other person sh slides up on their knees. And you have a dead person, you know, you do it, then you squeeze them and they come alive. And I think that was silly, and, uh, but it was really done to show different skill levels. It wasn't done, at that time, when judo was formed, it was a matter of names of techniques and showing different things, and it was, a, it was in the early days. There weren't books. Yeah. You know, they had scrolls, some draw line drawings. You didn't have movies or video or, you know, so it was a f way of saying these are some skills for the groundwork and stuff. And unfortunately, the kata people get, what I call the kata cultus, they get all wrapped up in the little things on how you slide and how mm -hmm. you, I mean, the things that don't mean anything, you know, for the technique. And they, they're just, they're getting so wrapped up in that they have these kata contests and you can lose points for maybe your nose goes the wrong way. I mean, things that don't, doesn't have, no, it, it doesn't mean anything. But um, 
Yeah, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, and then of course they made their own rules. What they did is there were certain techniques that Judo would not allow from a standpoint of competition, leg locks and other things. They also do things that I, I look at it, and I've worked with some very, very good Nawaza guys. My Nawaza was based on how to beat one of them, not how to beat a novice. Sure. Right? That's why some things people do with novices, I, I, I don't, for example, being in a turtle position for defensive. That's giving everything to the good, to the, your opponent. But, but since most people don't know how to turn over, a lot of the novices do it. Dumb and dumber, they're both, they're both doing it, see. Uh, my judo, well, we rarely do that, a certain amount. From that position, I just assume choke or arm bar, right there. I don't have to, why go for a hold? Uh, but, but what they do is, like for example, in the, um, uh, the jiu-jitsu, the Brazilian, they do a lot of, uh, what do they call it, a ready thing, where they, uh, they, they wrap their legs around the person mm -hmm. to start with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they call them. I can't remember. The guard. The guard. The guard. The guard. I look at that and say, why? Yeah, what's the point? I mean, you're not using your legs. Yeah. You kill your legs. Your legs should be like hands. Yes, exactly. Catching here. Push so and pull. Push, push, push and pull. pull. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you pull the guy away. I mean, exactly. Why would you cross your legs here? See, and I can see so many ways you can get taken from that. But that's from my judo background. But they do that, and they're effective. They they work with it, and they have skills from using it. They they don't just stay there. So these are small things that I I observe. And then of course the score, they have a, a different you know to get get into the guard, to get out of a guard, to go if you turn here. And some of this comes from wrestling, from how you get points in, in amateur wrestling. So some of that probably comes from that. Yeah. What? advice can you give for a future judo people who wants to learn judo or want to practice what advice would you like to give them or share well if you're if we're talking about um, novice judo yes people yes. coming in my advice is to have a structured program mm -hmm. and then the students know what the structure is okay I've seen different techniques one a friend of mine does he publishes a calendar on the internet, mm -hmm. and you go there, and you know this night you're going to learn so and so technique. Okay. All right, so they have something to keep it structured, so keep people structured. get interested, so, right. so they know where they're going. Right. When you end the class, tell the student, okay, next time we're going to do so and so. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Also, something very few people do, and that is have a whiteboard, and if you're going to use any Japanese name, okay. please write it down. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that is good. Also, um, there are some uh, some good teaching methods in judo. There's some where uh, you try to do both sides. Mm -hmm. You don't say right side, left side. You just decide to the other side, so the people don't become just right-handed. If you do that, it'll be a better building block for the future for sure. competition. All right. And um, uh, I would say, especially with novices, when a novice comes into judo, if you have a program, many of them will only go for the program because they have other things in life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to show self-defense and self-defense application. Mm -hmm. I do this when I teach novices because you don't need to hold a judo gate. Yeah. People don't walk around in these jackets wearing a t-shirt. So how do you make it work? Sure. Sure. How do you hold a body? Yes. Um, and uh, and just make it make it fun, you know. And and so um, if um, if people know where they're going and then have something where they can be tested. Now. Recently, we've come up with something that isn't really working at my club, but I'm with another association, we're going to put it into their system. And that is because in order to get promoted, we sometimes say you should know so many techniques. Mm -hmm. Well, taking a test is a little scary for people. And, to, and then you have a time problem. So what we do is we create a checklist. And these are the techniques. 
and then periodically you get signed off by your teacher so that when it's time to get promoted you already qualify <laughs> see and then you can just demonstrate sure some free practice yeah. and uh, and that way you know they're, they're, it keeps their interest keeps them coming uh, it motivates them to um, read books watch videos to more so opens their horizon yeah. Yeah. was when you're not on a mat so if you, the fact that you're there twice a week you have to be more productive yeah. Uh, you don't want you, so you have to give them things that they will do outside or different drills. For example, having a bungee cord in your garage or someplace so you can practice and have the feeling of, of what I call sensei bungee. If your form is bad, sensei bungee wins. So, <laughs> you so there are uh, things, in fact, what's interesting, one day a Russian judo player stopped by our place and he had this 20 foot piece of surgical tubing. It's like a bungee cord. Mm -hmm. His father was a was a, must have been a very good judo player in Russia. They always use that. So he carries it around. He's in a park. He sees a tree. He wraps it around the tree. He does this stuff, see? It was interesting that because I'm I'm from the bungee school and he's from the surgical tubing. <laughs> same idea, same but he had been carrying this thing. Every place he goes, he has this thing so he can do his judo. Um, and the reason that works out good is because when you work with a person, they're either overly cooperative, you don't you don't have that feeling, yes, see, yeah. or they're too stiff. Yeah, yeah. See, either way is no good. It does it's not beneficial. And so, uh, anyways, getting into uh, understanding te teaching methods are uh, uh, the Judo community has to know that French is very good with that. I've I've, I've, known, I've learned a few things from the French, and. Uh, but self-defense is important. Okay.